Hi everyone, this is a beginner video on how to create simple canes, loaves, and ribbons with polymer clay. In my last video, I walked through how to create a gradient sheet, which will be used for the polymer clay techniques in this video. So if you haven't watched that, it might be really helpful to pause this video first and then watch my Skinner Blends video in the cards, and then come back here. Stretching your sheet for caning. Before we start our canes, we want to stretch the sheet. And what I mean by that is that it's easier to work with a short wide cane than a long narrow one. Since you can go through a process called cane reduction in order to reduce a wide cane into various sizes in diameter and length. You can always size down in cane circumference, but you can't size up. After you've created your gradient sheet from the Skinner Blends video, trim off some of the edges to make the clay more uniform. Then cut the sheet in half and stack one half over the other. Roll the strip through the largest setting of your pasta machine while maintaining control by gently guiding the clay through the rollers. Continue running the clay through the rollers while reducing the thickness setting each time until you reach the fifth setting. Now you have a stretch sheet of clay at the perfect size for caning. Creating canes. To create a simple cane, decide on what color you'd like to start off at the center. For example, I start off with the center being yellow and I'll gradate to mauve. Also make sure you place your sheet on the surface as straight as possible, which will make the rolling process more even. This next step isn't required, but it helps in creating a tight, compact roll, which is important in preventing trap air between layers. Roll a thin snake and place it at the end of the sheet where you'll start the core of the cane. Roll the sheet of clay onto the snake being firm, but being careful not to press down too hard that you might distort the clay. The next step would be to trim the opposite ends with a sharp blade. However, it helps if you allow your cane to rest for several hours before slicing it so that it can regain firmness, making it easier to get clean, crisp slices. If you can't wait, you can freeze your cane for 10 to 15 minutes before cutting. In this video, I didn't have time to do either, so you'll see my clay get pinched in some areas by the pressure of my X-Acto knife, since this is mainly for demo purposes and to show you why it helps to ensure your clay is firm again before cutting. After that, you want to apply a method called cane reduction, which reduces the size of the cane, but also helps release air trap between the layers, prevents the layers from falling apart, reduces internal distortions and gaps in the cane slices. There are various ways to reduce a cane using compression and stretching techniques, but for starters, you can gently squeeze the cane on one end of your, with your index fingers and thumb while frequently rotating to keep the reduction consistent on all sides, and also tapping the front and back faces. Now you've created a cane that you can use to create repeatable shapes. For instance, you can morph the shape into a teardrop or petal, then reduce the cane into several different sizes to create flowers or other types of patterns. Creating gradient lobes. Gradient lobes are essentially square canes with a gradient pattern. To start off, you want to stretch your sheet in the same way you did with caning. Fold the clay back and forth like an accordion in one and a half to one inch wide intervals. Do not press the clay together too firmly while doing this. Once the clay has been completely folded, gently compress the stack together with your fingers or an acrylic roller to remove any air pockets. Trim the excess clay off at the opposite ends of the strip. You can also trim another side, but leaving one side untrimmed can give you an anchor when slicing the last bit of a loaf, giving you more usable clay. Then you can utilize cane reduction to remove any other excess air pockets between the layers of clay. Gradient loaves can be used as background sheets for small applications. You can also enlarge them by backing them with thicker layers or white clay, or connect multiple sheets at 45 degree angles. Creating ribbons. Ribbons are gradient loaves, but they give an illusion of a satin ribbon which you can assemble multiple ribbons and create the illusion of a basket woven pattern. 
To create a ribbon, you need a gradient loaf that goes from light to dark. Slice the loaf several times and assemble two pieces together so that the lightest sides are facing inward. If needed, you can stretch certain pieces and arrange them to create this basket woven appearance, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching till the very end. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and good luck with your next project.